Now that you know about the Hyperforce eligibility criteria and assuming you are eligible for Hyperforce, let's deep dive into the Hyperforce migration process. It is basically no different from the standard org migration process some of you may know. But let's do a quick recap. First, watch your email inbox for notifications about the move. Administrators of orgs scheduled to migrate would be notified via a Salesforce product and service notification, which is sent multiple times before the actual migration. If you didn't receive such notification, then you are not migrating yet. Note that while we do post general maintenance notification on the trust site, we may not post all migration notifications onto the trust site against the current instance you are on if only a small subset of customers are being moved from that instance. Also note that even if we do post all migration notifications onto the trust site against the current instance you are on, it does not mean that everyone on that instance is being migrated. The clear indication that your org is moving is when the administrators of your org are notified via a Salesforce product and service notification confirming the date and time of the move. So while it is still best practice to subscribe to trust notification, please make sure you check your email inbox for those notifications. And to ensure you always receive those notifications, please make sure your company allow list these emails from Salesforce and check your email filters often. For more details, please review the Salesforce products and service notification knowledge article. Once you get the notification, ensure you review our knowledge article on how to prepare yourself for all migrations and follow those best practices. And familiarize yourself with what will happen during the day and time of the migration maintenance window. Once the migration is over, that's it, you're on Hyperforce. Just remember to unsubscribe from trust notifications from the old instance and resubscribe to trust notifications for your org's new instance. Let's take a look at some of the best practices in preparing for an org migration. Now, some of you may have seen the how to prepare for org migration knowledge article long ago and have done the best practices. However, with our three major releases every year, it doesn't hurt to revisit the article and look for any key changes. Especially with the upcoming move to Hyperforce, it is a great time to review them and stay up to date. There are some of the best practices, such as updating hard-coded references that are very basic. Other best practices, such as enabling tenant-specific OAuth endpoints for Marketing Cloud Connect are lesser known best practices that we ask our customers to do when they seem to have issues with connecting their orgs to Marketing Cloud. But the most commonly neglected best practice, which results in the most common support requests that we receive after an org migration, are due to disrupted access to and from Salesforce due to changes in the IP addresses as a result of the org migration. In the next few videos, I've enlisted some more Salesforce architects from our professional services team to discuss each of those best practices in more detail.